Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Uh, we're going to be getting through four episodes of Breaking Bad. Uh, as long as this holds out, I won't need to take a break. Okay, so I have some questions regarding the last three episodes, because there's a lot of symbolism happening, uh, especially when Walter's in the hospital. Um, episode three of season two. First of all, what is this painting that Walter keeps looking at? Okay, at first viewing of the episode, Walter gave off the impression, well, at least to me, that he was putting on, like, a little bit of an act to make it look like, you know, he's still playing up his uh, amnesia shtick. Because he's not actually, like, paying attention to the therapist. Like, he's just, he's not even blinking when he's staring at this picture. So at first, I was like, okay, so he's just still playing this part to see if he can leave. But it's actually hurting his case by doing that. Like, he'll stay in the hospital longer, so... And then he just, he just um, tells the truth. So he has a wife who's pregnant and about to give birth to a child that they didn't intend in the first place. There's no way that he can afford that in addition to everything else. And he has a 15-year-old son that has cerebral palsy. And he's an extremely overqualified high school chemistry teacher where his friends have totally shot past him in terms of success. I guess instead of answering the question directly, he just went way back to the beginning and used that as an answer. <laughs> sort of packaging the whole thing and tying it off in a little bow being that answer. So good answer. Good answer. I believe it too. And like as a therapist, like you would believe that, right? Especially if the man only has 18 months to live, right? So what does he have to lose? He doesn't have anything to gain by, well, he won't go to jail <laughs> for the next 18 months. But now you see the painting uh, reappear towards the end when he's about to leave. This one's a little bit on the nose, of course, but like it's, it's pretty obvious that that's supposed to represent Walter's family, Skyler, uh, Walter Jr., and his about to be born child. And Walter's uh, the, the man sailing away, sailing away to work, to provide, sailing away to the afterlife. It's a little eerie when you look at the beach, though. The beach, it looks so desolate, so, like, barren. You know, like, the wood on the beach, it's... It might symbolize Walter leaving his family in debt. You could read it that way. You know, Walter's leaving. It's like, hey, see ya, I'm gonna be dead soon. <laughs> and I'm leaving you guys stranded on the beach with nothing. So that's Walter's motivation to keep going and keep cooking. So when Tuca opens up the trunk with Walter and Pinkman in it, Walter has like a vision of Skylar, who's heavenly, you know, she looks like an angel. The sun's behind her, her golden hair is flowing in the wind. And she says, I understand. That's the only thing that she says. And Walter is at peace with that. So is it, I understand why you're going through this for us. I understand your secrecy. I understand, like, if you tell me your secret, I'll understand. You could, you could also think of it as a way of Walter tr tricking himself into thinking that he needs to do this. I mean, he does need to do it, but it's not tricking in a malevolent way, like he's, addi he's addicted to it, uh, yet. But, like, tricking as a way of keeping himself motivated. So sometimes you need to do that just to trick yourself, right? Because <laughs> this is nowhere near, like, what Walter's going through. But as an example of tricking myself, I usually have all of the clocks, uh, my alarm clock. Uh, it's intentionally set, like, ten minutes ahead just so that I can wake up and like get ready, you know? Like ways of tricking myself. But Walter is, you know, he's kind of tricking himself into staying motivated by looking at these pictures, just like, and these visions of Skylar. Like I wouldn't be surprised if we saw like another dream sequence. <sighs> okay, so Jesse Pinkman. Don't tell me what to do is what I want him to say to Walter on that phone, you know? Don't tell me what to do, I'm out. 
I've been given a second chance, a third chance, actually. The, the master plan. Walter orchestrated all of it, including Pinkman's plan. So that time in the desert, that montage of them walking, was not wasted. Walter was explaining his plan to Pinkman of what to do. Uh, including Wendy, or I don't think he knows about Wendy, but like, getting Pinkman to, you know, get like, you know, friends to help him out, Badger, uh, a story to stick to. There's no way that Jesse would have figured that out to himself. See, this is what I'm saying when Walter can, if given enough time, he's like Batman. But, like, you know, Batman can think of it on his feet, too, right? Walter can't think of it on his feet. Given enough time, he can... He can... He's the, the master puppeteer, right? So he's just pulling the strings of all these different puppets. And Jesse's one of them. And at that point, like, Jesse, he was just given a, another chance. He just... You know, that was, that was his time to say, I'm done. I want to, you know, go straight. You've scared me straight, man. He should have said, don't tell me what to do. I'm done. Thank you, Mr. White, for everything. Sorry, not sorry that you're going to die. Nothing's changed for Walter. He's still going to pass away of cancer within 18 months. And Jesse, he's got to pay bills? I don't buy that. I don't buy that. There's something more there. And I think it has to do with his father. Because you saw him on the phone talking to his father. Hey, Dad. Uh, I'm downtown. Uh, I'm going straight. I'm going to get that data management job that we were talking about, right? I'm going to get my life on track. Uh, can you please come and pick me up? And his dad just said no. I mean, you didn't, you didn't hear what he said because it was on the phone, but the impression is that Pinkman has no more second chances with his family. Right when he needed them the most, right? So, at least he has Wendy. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, you know, I think Wendy will show up again. Anyways, um, yeah, so I think Walter is filling this father figure void of Pinkman's. As much as Pinkman doesn't want to keep going, he wants to keep cooking because I think he just needs that, like, that bond that he never had with his own father. I hope we explore more of the Pinkman's and what it was like for Jesse to grow up. Speaking of filling a void, Tuco. Who's gonna fill this vacuum in the south of New Mexico? So Hank dropped a line that I caught. Those boys from Juarez, I hope we get to them before those boys from Juarez do. This is going into drug cartel territory now. Yeah, so okay, he didn't put trackers on the car. <laughs> you guys are right, I didn't know people put keys under their car. That's smart, actually, but now that I know, I, I just see Walter walking into Hank's office and just seeing just a collection of what has happened. Pictures, trophies, those grills of Tuco. He's probably going to use that as a paperweight. And more. I'm expecting them to leave more of a trail. Hank's going to find out. I hope within these next, like, four episodes that we see, like, just a light switch in Hank's eyes. Skylar's almost ready to give birth. Um, time's going by pretty fast. And Marie. Marie has six more sessions with uh, this therapist named Dave. Yes, she has kleptomania. But she did come across as a little forgetful. Because Hank and Marie were arguing about the date. You know, Marie wanted to go try this new Chinese place. You know, go about life as normal. And Hank's like, um, no, don't you remember, honey? Uh, 8 o'clock on Thursdays, that's when you have your sessions with Dave. And Marie's like, no. When she ran over that car, I mean, she could have just been angry, right? <laughs> or she's just forgetful. <laughs> One more thing. Um, Elliot and Gretchen, we didn't see them at all. I'm expecting to see them at some point in these next four episodes. I went back to that party scene. I rewatched that party scene, and uh, I picked up on something that I didn't notice the first time, because I was talking while I was reacting to it, and I, I didn't hear. So that scene when Elliot is opening his birthday presents, Skylar kind of talks under her breath, saying, what is this guy, like, eight years old? Why is he doing this? And Walter's like, you know, he doesn't say anything about it, kind of like he knows that Elliot's kind of... I think Elliot's a, a little naive. 
So it, it's never the first choice or the first idea that's usually the most interesting. It's the same thing with getting ready for an audition. You have to constantly try to find the strongest choice. So I'm tweaking my original uh, theory regarding Elliot. I still think he has something to do with Walter contracting lung cancer, but not in the way that I think. Just like with Tuco, I thought he was going to snort mercury. He ended up not snorting mercury and something completely different. He came close, but he didn't uh, go the way that I thought he was. So, Elliot, I don't think this is going to happen the way that I think it will. I think this is my gut talking right now. I think Gretchen has something to do with this. Are you guys familiar with the term femme fatale? It's just, I'm throwing that out there. He could just genuinely just be a nice guy. And just very naive. And Gretchen is just... I don't know. But then why would she be crying and for us to see it if she was just making it up over the phone? I don't know. This is just me spitballing. So, Elliot, I trust you, but I don't trust you. Gretchen, I also trust you, but I also don't trust you. So that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> Did little Billy get his toy car crushed on purpose? Did he overestimate the value of the toy car to swindle Hank? Will Uncle Theo ever find the right brand of underwear that has added leakage protection? <laughs> okay, so these beginnings. Are we going back to the stuffed animal? Oh my god! <laughs> yes, we are. It's upside down this time. Yo, this better not be like the last episode and... Stop. <laughs> That's so scary. <laughs> There's probably like a dead body or something in there. Oh, is this a crime scene? There's probably like a giant explosion or something. It's probably like a house. No, it is not a house. There has to be a twist. It's not what I think. This is stupid. Oh, uh, laying low, right? Got a better idea. Okay, fun. Whatever, so... When do we, you know... We don't. For now. No cooking until things settle down. Settle down? I thought you were the one that said nothing's changed. Look, I just put my family through an ordeal that they're just now starting to accept, okay? Your ailing brother-in-law. Ah, uh, Walter still has money, though. $600. Rest of what? Half your money's mine. You own 50-50 partners. That's our business model. Meaning what exactly? That I suffer for your carelessness? Okay, you're the one who wanted to work with Tuco. Okay, the one with that, none of this would have happened. The relationship is so rocky right now. <laughs> Puppet master. Hey, Mom. Um, Dad's cooking breakfast, but don't worry, I'm also doing all the dishes. Mm. Huh? 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 Nice. Follow me. There's also orange juice and grapefruit juice, which, personally, as you know, I've never been a fan of, but. Considering all the polyphenols and the melaminoids, can't hurt. Walt, you didn't have to do this. I wanted to. She still hasn't forgotten about that second cell phone. Ah, boss gags. There's another one. Oh. Mm. Whoever they are, <laughs> bye. Thanks for breakfast. Hi. You're welcome. Listen, tell Lewis to drive carefully, will you? All right. No, no, I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> hey, uh, listen. In the calendar section, um, it's just wide-eyed. week long, there's a uh, a fiction writer seminar at UNM, and 
You know, probably talking about how to get published and that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so anyway, I thought maybe you might. I mean, I'll go with you if you like. Yeah, it's a very nice distraction. What about the second cell phone? That's totally what she's thinking. She's like, this is weird. Oh, and, uh, you know, I was thinking about what you asked me the other night. You know, you were, you were wondering if I had a, a second cell phone. Ah! And, uh, well, I've been thinking about that a lot. And I think what you heard was my cell phone alarm going off. <laughs> it's, uh, I've been using it a lot as a medication reminder to, uh, well, remind me to take my medication. And, uh, well, the weird thing is that the alarm sound is almost Oh, no, exactly he's the trailing same off, too. As the regular phone ring, which is really a poor design, if you ask me. But I think that was probably it. I, uh, I tried to go in and change it to a different sound. He's still talking. You don't do that. They so overcomplicate these things. Anyway, it was, uh... Probably just as well that I lost it. It's got to be a new one on the market by now. You know, if we do this thing at UNM, maybe on the way home, we can stop by and I can get a new cell phone. Oop. She didn't fall for it. You do it, so I'm going to do it. Jesse Bruce Pinkman. It, Pursuant to Section 47-8-3. It's got to be a restraining order. Property code. You are hereby given notice to vacate the premises listed as 9809 Margo, Albuquerque 87104. Oh, wait, what? You're kicking me out of my own house? It's your Aunt Ginny's house. Yeah, she gave it to me. She never gave it to you, Jesse. You are allowed residentiary privileges. Your parents have always been the property owners. Oh, my God. I saw your basement. Oh, yeah. I was worried. So I went over there and I let myself found your laboratory. You guys have your own key? <sighs> Manufacture of a Schedule II controlled substance is a second degree felony. Vacate the house in 72 hours. Otherwise, your parents have authorized me to contact the authorities. Is that clear? It's a little detail, but I love that clock. Continuity. I've heard it in all these silent, like, moments in the house. Hey, I, uh, fixed the garage door. Great. Yeah. When practice bent, that's what I was doesn't trust you, man. I just pretended to do something. It's so awkward. Hey, you know, for what it's worth, I, I was thinking about going back to those meetings, the cancer support group. That's good. <laughs> yeah. You can just yeah, good. cut the tension with uh, you were, you were a knife. Funny about that. What the hell, yo? I thought this was just a wake-up call. We are putting it in storage. When you decide to grow up, you can have it back. Well, why do you grow up, Mom? Jenny wanted me here. Or I was the one who took care of her. Or I took her to her appointments and made her lunch every day. I earned this. You did not make her lunch every day. What'd you do? Huh? She's lying there, dying, and where the hell are you? Don't start with me. Oh, uh, now, now what? You decided to, oh, I don't know, make your eldest son homeless? Wow! Great family, Mom! Why are you like this? Why? No, Mom, Mom, Mom! Hey, where am I supposed to go? I don't know, sweetheart. But please, turn your life around. Yeah, yeah, this is gonna help big time with that! Bitch! got an omelet. You want an omelet? No, I'm good. New Mexican Christmas style red and green chilies. Where's Walter Jr.? No, thank you, though. Uh, 
Flynn and me got to get going. Flynn? Who's Flynn? <laughs> <laughs> He does like the name Walter Jr. Yeah. What about Scar? Spike. I don't know. That's what he likes to be called these days. What's wrong with Walter Jr.? That's his own identity. Yeah, that's actually true. Hey, I made omelets. I'm going out, but thanks, though. Yeah. Stop being so uppity. It's a little weird, man. It's freaking me out. <laughs> Those eyes of Skylar. Jeez. She doesn't even have to say anything, just... Daggers. Through my heart. What part of no contact didn't you understand? I know, but there's a problem. I don't care. We agree. No amount of pay-per-view channels is gonna make any difference, honey. We're... <laughs> Stop. <laughs> She's not falling for it. Skylar, Skylar. Where are you going? Um, can you at least tell me that? Oh. Ooh. You should probably get that one. I'll be back in a few hours. Skylar. What a mess. What? Yo, I get I shouldn't call, but I'm in a situation over here, and I need my money. I just gave you $600. Yeah, and thanks, Daddy Warbucks, but that was before my housing situation went completely testicular on me, okay? You smoked the entire $600, didn't you? What? No. Yes. No. Look, Jesse, your problems are just that. Your They're not going to take the phone, are they? No contact. Do not call here, ever. When the moment is right, I will call Mr. you. Mr. White, again. you're not listening no, no, anymore. No. You're going to kick me out of my house. Why that Grinch he stole the last can of hoo-hash. Uh. Hi. Hello. Hey, honey, you remember Jesse uh, Pinkman? Wow. His house is getting bug bombed, and I said he could crash a few nights. Bug bombed? <laughs> Paul, can you help me in the bedroom with me? Dude, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna kill me. I Holy space that the in-laws are crashing this weekend. You, you got other people to call? Really? No, that's that's cool. I got tons of people, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, in-laws. Sucks to be you, P. Look, I already called Badger, all right? I called everyone. I need a solid here, bro. What if it's just for tonight? <laughs> You cannot be serious. They stole his bike. Someone took your bike. Man. Yeah, Kate, thanks. Not cool. I mean, it's technically his, right? Yo, we better not see Badger's douche of a cousin. At least he got out right away, right? <laughs> and it smells like... It smells like meth already in there. No 
Nobody's telling him anything. Let's go do something. Uh, like what? Something fun. Good. Yes, nice and smooth. Seems Good. like you've done this before. Good. I like the hands of Tenant too. Very nice. Much better than last time. Oh, yeah, Lewis has been helping me. Has he? Yeah. So how how absent has Walter Sr. been in Walter Jr.'s, like, life these last couple of years? Like, these, like, these little benchmark periods. No, wait, wait. No, Walt, you can't do that. You, you can't use one foot on each pedal. Why not? Because you can't stop, Walt, okay? Stop, please. Okay, just, you don't have to, okay? All right, that's fine. Just, that's okay, that's okay. Just try it again. Here we go. Better? Right, the gas, the brake, the gas, the brake. I, I can't do this. My, my legs don't work that way. Your legs are fine. You just have to stick with it. I don't set limits for yourself, Walt. You're all right. I will get this, I promise. Don't force them. You're going to make the kid upset. Here we go. All right, we have a turn coming up here, so prepare to apply the brake. <laughs> I thought I was going to crash through that. Break, break, break. I'm braking. Wait, you're using both feet again. It's not stopping. That, you know, that's the gas. Use the brake. The brake. 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 Okay. Just want me to stop. Win. <laughs> Oh my god! Are you a stand-up dude? <laughs> it's Badger's douche of a cousin. Oh no. He's gonna see the blue on the door. Just when you think it can't get any worse for Pinkman. There's that button at the end of the scene. Hands up, asshole! Yo, yo, yo. So help me, I will spread you. No, no, wait, no. All right, it's me. Okay, it's Jesse. You smell like shit. It's a long story. And he taped up his finger because of the, uh, when he was climbing over the fence. I can't pay you today, but I can pay you this week. All right? I kick you out. I take payment from your inventory. I know a guy that'll pay premium for this kind of crap. All right, two grand. God, God, I really need a break. A break. Okay. I don't know. There's a bunch of stuff in there. There's um, something called methylamine. Me meth. Whatever the hell you pronounce it. Methylamine. I don't know. It banged on it. It sounds pretty. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Is he gonna drive out? The engine doesn't work, but he's the he's the RV whisperer, right? Shit, how much? Hey, it works. <laughs> what are you going to tell her now? What lie are you going to tell her now? Tell her about the phone. Do, this. do what? This. Not, not talking to me. Going out all day and, and refusing to tell me where. I mean, you are obviously angry with me about something. So let's talk about it. So good. I feel like you're upset with me because you think that I'm up to something. Like what? I, I, I have no idea, Skyler. What? <laughs> having an affair? Think that I'm being unfaithful? I don't know. Okay. So ask me. Why? Did you even tell me? 
Silence is so much more louder than just yelling at each other. I'm not having an affair. I heard you. Not having an affair. Congratulations. No, you know what? Congratulations to you, Skyler. Great job. I mean, what is this? What, what do I have to do? I'm trying to talk to you, and you just... Okay, don't talk, Walt. Shut up and say something that isn't complete bullshit. You want to know what you have to do? You have to tell me what's really going on right now. Today. No more excuses. No more apologies. No more of these, these obvious, desperate breakfasts. You don't want to lose contact with me, Walt. Good. Then tell me. Now. Tell you what? Skyler. What is it you want me to tell you? I don't know. We're not done here. Skyler! Do you know what I've done for this family? <laughs> if you actually this stupid. No, look, I know this is an optimal to come situation. to my house and park on my street driving this vehicle. I mean, what the hell is wrong with you? I'm I'm really asking. Nothing. I'm sorry. And what I just... if Skyler had seen it? What was the plan then, genius? Huh? I don't know. I... You don't know. You know why you don't know? Because you don't think. That's why. You don't think. You never figured out how to think, did you, Pinkman? Hey, I said I was sorry. I just need my half of the money, and I will go. Your half? There is no your half of the money. There is only my all of it. Do you understand? Why, why should I be penalized because of your sloppiness? Look, that is completely uncool, all right? We agreed. 50-50 partners. Partners in what? What exactly do you do here? I've been meaning to ask, because I'm the producer, right? I cook. But from what I can tell, you are just a drug addict. You are a pathetic junkie. Too stupid to understand and follow simple rudimentary instructions. Too stupid to... <laughs> All this happened in one day. God, at least it's still there. I was expecting the money to be gone. Walter Jr. <sighs> so what, she's just been hanging out in the market? Either it's a really big secret, she's thinking, or maybe he is telling the truth. A secret so big that it's worth, you know, keeping her from knowing. Smoking while pregnant. Oh. That was a depressing episode, holy crap. Now Walter's getting a taste of what he's putting through, or he's feeling what he put his son and his wife through. Skylar's smoking while pregnant. Is that what she's been doing every time she goes out? Yeah, so like I was saying before, with Walter in the car with Walter Jr. teaching him how to drive, it's so forced. Forcing quality time, it just, it doesn't work. And Walter was distant from, like, the first episode, you know? He was just kind of, like, on autopilot. Like, has Walter, like, missed these important, like, moments in his son's life? And now him trying to make up for it, it just seems like he's too late. Walter Jr., yeah, yeah. Like, he's, he's so uncomfortable. Everyone is uncomfortable. It's making me uncomfortable. Jesse. Well, <sighs> I want to help this guy, man. His dad has had enough, his mom gave that look like she wanted to help. It looked like Jesse missed the phone call.
for them to talk earlier and then. <laughs> oh, Badger's cousin. He can just talk to Badger and then Badger will just lead him to Pinkman. It's just. I need like a pick me up. <laughs> uh, I bet that was the same porta potty that Billy was using. Not Billy the kid, but like, I don't know what the kid's name is, but the security card that they stole the methylamine from, and they tied him up in a porta potty. The anger in this episode, holy crap. So many different kinds. And it just shows you how effective each kind is. Like, they all, they all, they all work. But, Skylar's silence? Just going like this. Oh, that's great, you made me breakfast? Is there anything else you want to tell me? No? Just, they're piercing into my soul. <laughs> Walter Jr. is gonna act out, like even more. He's embarrassed by his dad. Okay, what's the harm? What's the harm in Walter just telling Skylar, hey, I cook meth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I killed two people. I melted a guy. There's a gun and $70,000 of cash in our vent. She'll probably go like, oh yeah? There's a cash and $70,000 and a gun in our vent. Is there anything else you want to tell me? <laughs> Maybe she won't even believe it. But like she knows that Walters, he's sticking to his guns. It's either he's telling the truth, and Skylar's overreacting, like she's thinking this, or it's a secret so big that he's doing it to protect her. Like, it'll, it'll shatter the family, how big, just the magnitude, this lie is. Okay, I need to know if they're okay. Tuco's grills. These openings are killing me. What is going on? I mean, there was an explosion in the... Or, I think it's an explosion. That was with Hank, though. So, we're not going through an insurer, is that correct? Yes, direct bill. We do have a payment plan available, should you be interested. He just lost half of his 70, or... Half of what he had. Thank you. Thoughts and prayers. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it should be covered. You bet I will. Yeah, in triplicate. Okay. Well, I'm sorry you couldn't be of more help. Yeah. <laughs> Someone who smokes? No. The hospital bill came. Yeah. Three days day. Thirteen thousand and counting. Oh my god. Is this something that uh Gretchen and Elliot might cover? I mean I uh I know it's strictly your domain, but uh... They will. I'm sure they will. I'll have one. Thirteen thousand for the hostel. St that's all of his money. Like if they had seventy grand, and then they cut it in half between the two, so thirty-five, and then he cut that in half again. He's running out. <sighs> that gun's gonna play another role somewhere. He's not keeping it for nothing. He's short. So that whole thing with Tuco was all for nothing. <laughs> oh my god. 
Because he had to stay in the hospital and his money left over is, it's gone. I love those shots from like the ground up or the toilet up. It happened with Emilio when they were cleaning the the liquid ooze. It happened when they were burning the gun. Like I noticed these things. Uh, it's a trophy. Still completely. Well, thanks for stopping by. Some turf's up for grab. No takers so far? Man, yeah, we keep hearing a name. Uh, Heisenberg. Ooh. Maybe it's a dime bagger we come across. Heisenberg? Yeah, I know. Maybe it's a tweaker urban legend. Still, somebody somewhere is cooking that big blue we keep finding. Anyway, uh, we'll stay on it. And nobody said anything about Pinkman? You, my friend. How does Albuquerque liaison Tri-State Border Interdiction Task Force? Like one hell of a promotion. As of the first, I want you to split your time between here and El Paso. Here's the man. Yeah, you're the man, Hank. Hey, congratulations. Thanks. Everything's going Hank's way. I don't like the I don't like the, where this is going. PTSD. Got PTSD from uh, shootout with Tuco. That would give me nightmares too. I have PTSD from that bell. Oh, the douche again. Oh, he's got the money. He's got to pay for the gate too. That's what they tell me. This guy's like Frankenstein. He's huge. For the, uh, the tow, the repairs, and extra for the damages and stuff. The, the gates, the toilet. Look, like I said, my word is, is my bond. bond. He's a stand-up dude. Right, I got storage needs. I got scratch up front. We could, you know, negotiate. You want to be part of the crew? Put it together a crew. Gate in and out privileges. Month to month, cash up front, inside. And I don't know you. I don't know Jack. Salon? You should take it for nine G's. <sighs> what about that one? Bring around the Lona. The loner? The loner? Classic. It's uh, Jane, right? Jane, I gotta say, this place is awesome. Really? Does it inspire awe? All right, the usual drill. I'll need a W-2 or a recent pay stub, current employer, former address, you know, yada yada. And it's all copacetic. I'll call. Yeah, look, uh, thing is, I can 
Unbelievable. Give you cash. And I'm just currently in between situations. Then I'm currently not renting. Look, look, I got the money, and I'm totally good for it. Pen on paper, that's what I need. Or go run your game somewhere else. Look, um, my folks, they kicked me out. I'm, uh, I'm a disappointment. Apparently, they don't meet their expectations. Again, so, you know, now I'm something on Gratis or whatever, but you know what? I'm a good person, and... I work hard, I will pay you every month, and I will pay you on time. I will not mess this up, okay? I swear. If you blow this, I want you gone. I know guys will have your skinny ass out back by the dumpster faster than you can blink. I'll fill it in, just sign your name. Which is what, by the way? It's Jesse. I, uh, Jesse Jackson. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Does he make his own beer? It is a Schweden, what? <laughs> Marie, where have you been? Have you been going to your sessions? What are you doing? Beating off what's it look like up there. That is, in fact, exactly what it looks like to me. You call in sick the day after receiving a long awaited career boosting promotion. So you can play Oktoberfest in your man cave. I don't get it. Really. All I'm saying is uh, everything's fine. I can take a day. No big deal. Kind of looks like the windows. Shattered glass of the windows. Maybe he threw Tuco's, um, just as a reminder of bad times, he threw it in the water. Why are we cooking when we can't even move what we cook? Because we're going to be the distributors too. Well, how much do you think you can sell on your own? Say, if I cook during the day. You work the nights. Dude, what? Prior to Tuco, that was your plan, wasn't it? Now, I understand it'll be a fraction of what we brought in before, but still. What choice do we have? Well, first of all, there's no we, okay? You're talking me, solo, busting humps, slinging shards. I got profile now. Don't you get that? A DA's up my ass. No, I'm, I'm not exposing myself to that level of risk for chump change. No way. Then what do you suggest? Good. I don't think either of us are eager to jump into bed with another Tuco. Switch it. Switch the roles. I got bills, man. You've got bills? Rent, yo, responsibilities. I've already lost more than I've made, and I'm tired of dicking around out here. You want to know how much I've got left? After completing my first round of treatment and financing the world's most expensive alibi? Huh? Zero! Zip nothing! I've got nothing to show for all of this. Nothing for my family, which, as you might remember, was the whole damn point! That leaves us with a total of two choices. We go into business with yet another homicidal lunatic, or you and I stop. You selling whatever you can. There's a third way. And what would that be? We got to be Tuco. I cut out the middleman, run our own game. So you're going to what? Snort meth off a Bowie knife? Hire Badger. You're going to beat your homies to death when they diss you? Look, I know some guys. Stereotypes. Yeah, I, I can create a network. Look, we control production and distribution. That way we stay off the front lines while moving some serious glass. I mean... The point here is to make money, right? Sky high stacks. No. No, that's not the point. No, I am not willing to do that. Who said anything about you? I don't vote for this plan. I'm not comfortable bringing in unknown entities into our operation. Yeah? Well, you don't get to vote. He's taking charge. This is a partnership, remember? 
I rem oh, I remember. Now you cook. I sell. That was the division of labor when we started all this. And that's exactly how we should have kept it. Because I sure as hell didn't find myself locked in a trunk or on my knees with a gun to my head before your greedy old ass came along. I will admit to a bit of a learning. Come on. <laughs> in any case, it's not going to happen that way anymore. Yeah, damn straight. Know why? Because we do things my way this time. Or I walk. You need me more than I need you. Walt. Ah. <laughs> Skinny Pete and Badger. Oh, from my class, uh, you oh my God. It, yo. Hey, combo, good to see you. Welcome to my humble abode. Yo, Badge, hey. Yes. Oh, crib, <laughs> <laughs> hey, it echoes. Hello. Hello. Holla, holla, holla. This must have been when rent was affordable. 2020. Viewing comfort, it's gonna be chill. The ladies, they cream up real nice for like candles and shit. <laughs> ah, you are going to score big time. <laughs> All right, so uh, how about we get, you know down to it? This is a big opportunity I am giving you. Understand, Badger? What is this? Oh, uh, a big opportunity. <laughs> Exactly. All right, this is the round four. Gentlemen, um, how far you go is up to A big you. opportunity. Well, bring out the product, yo. No, no, no. Not here, all right? Not ever. Blind drop. I will let you know when and where. <sighs> Human heads. They leave. The cartels, they litter the place with human heads. Fantastic. Real estate website for DC. There's just so much <laughs> culture there. You know, I was talking to Melinda, Hank's boss's wife. I told you about her, the one with the helmet hair and the permanent lip liner. Anyway, she was saying that when they were there, Gonna use her eyes. For overwhelming clear lies to me, the shoplifting. I agree with that. If you don't respect me enough to apologize, to tell me the truth, and Somebody has to tell her something. She needs a break. Ah, here's that montage again of upbeat music and terrible things happening. It's clever. What if it rains? Everything's coming up skinny Pete.
Ugh. That cackle. So what, Skinny Pete is done? I'm guessing this one doesn't bounce. Draft. 15K. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Help me understand the math, okay? 16 ounces should net to me $16,000. 16. He has to pay. Not 15. Something came up. Something came up? One of my guys got held up by a couple junkies. Lost an ounce. But it's cool, okay? Skinny P's cool. Or rather, you got robbed, but it doesn't matter. Dude, it's called breakage, okay? Like Kmart, shit breaks. And you're thinking this is acceptable. It's the cost of business, yo. You're sweating me over a grand? Hey, look, I'm just the chemist here. I'm not the street guy, yo. But it seems to me that what you call breakage is just you making a fool of yourself. Now, I've got another technical term for it. Non-sustainable business model. You're focusing on the negative. Six grand a day we're making. What's your problem? What happens when word gets out? And it's open season on these clowns you hire, huh? Once everyone knows that Jesse Pinkman, drug lord, can be robbed with impunity. Come on. You think Tuco had breakage? He broke the skull of anybody who tried to rip him off. You want another grand? Is that it? Not my point. Take it! Here! <sighs> Look, you got 15 Money fight! You didn't have yesterday. Hey, we're making bank. Shit happens. And you're all tucked in tonight with your precious family. So why don't you just stop being such a freak about everything? You've made the division of labor very clear. Yo. I mean... Seriously, what the hell do you want me to do? Huh? I have a craving. Once in a while, it's not a big deal. Where's Junior? Oh. You mean Flynn? Oh, where? <laughs> where? Huh? I don't know. <laughs> Sure, son, too. Why am I the only one who needs to keep track of our son? I'll tell you what, Walt. You want to know where he is? Ask him. Just pick up the phone like I do. Use her cell phone. Perhaps you might know something about this. Perhaps. Mm -hmm. I can. Perhaps I don't. I'd like an explanation. Oh, I really don't want to go down <laughs> this road, Walt. You're pregnant, for God's sakes. Three and a half cigarettes is not going to do a thing oh. to the baby. Nothing. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you're so sure, Doctor. Three and a half. That was it. I tossed the rest. And I'm sure you'll be very glad to hear that, yes, I feel ashamed. Skylar, this, I mean, this is something that... This is so unlike you. Why... She's rubber. You can't. You can't throw anything up, up, up against her, Walter. Hey. He's got to just be hearing it. Or is it his beer bottles? I 
want you to handle it. The people that held up Skinny Pete. Okay. <laughs> like, how'd he do that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you pretend to throw it. And then, like, in front of the camera on the other side of the river, plop. But it looks so... Okay, so good. Yeah, my attention is getting split because... Not only am I focused on the episode, I'm also focused on how they make it, too. Hank is PTSD. I see problems. Just, he, he can't aim straight. He's not going to be able to aim straight. Who's Jesse going to take out? Again, you can't be playing drug cartel. It's not a game. Badger. His other friend, I forget his name. The big guy. And uh, Skinny Pete. Like, they don't know. What are they going to think? when Pinkman, like, offs someone. Don't expose Badger to any of this violence. He's an impressionable youngster. Yo, how much is Pinkman paying a month for that place? Like, tell me. I wonder if Marie told Skylar about what's going on with her. The kleptomania, the sessions with Dave. They dropped the name again. Okay, guys, topped off my coffee. Battery's uh, still going strong. Yep, still strong. So we're going to watch episode 6 now. He's a kind soul at heart. So if he has to kill somebody, like he has to kill this bug right now. If he can't kill the bug. Yeah, now he's a kind soul. Skinny Pete. Oh, come on. He's gonna find Miss Cackle. They got names. Hers is like, I don't know, she's just as woman is all. Him, they call Spooge. Spooge? Not Mad Dog, not Diesel. Let me get this straight. You got jacked by a guy named Spooge. Yo, what's his name matter? All I saw was that knife he stuck in my face like that big. But hey, you know, if you're looking for a reason not to go do this thing... Hey, did I say that? Because I'll go do it myself, right? It's just... I'm on probation. These two? They need to get got. Just as long as somebody else does it. Avon calling. Your funeral, Jack. Hey, do not mess with me. I will bury you because I'm crazy. Yo, yeah, mucho loco. Do not test me. Honey, you block in the mailbox. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Like it's gonna be a nice day, huh? Oh, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. High 70s. Have a great day. Right on, you too. What if they jump you? Yo! Anybody home? Jesus. I had a feeling they had a kid. 
something was just gonna like irk at his heartstrings. Yo, don't you want to watch something other than this? Like, I don't know, Mr. Rogers? Mm. My folks coming home. Your dad, Mr. Spooge, from the museum, getting back. If he kills the parents, like, the kid's not going to have anyone to look after him. Like, he can't do it. Hi, Walt and Scott. This is Gretchen Schwartz calling to say hello. I'm down from Santa Fe today, and I was just thinking about you both. Hoping everything's well. I'm just so glad to hear that everybody's fine. That's wonderful. Gretchen, I, I, um... I'm so very, very long overdue in, in telling you this, and I just have to take Walt at his word that that he's been passing it along for me. I mean, he's been so adamant about wanting to handle this whole thing by himself. And um, but I have picked up the phone about a hundred times. I just um. What is it? I um I can't begin to thank you, Nellie, for what you've done. Um, the money for Walt's ah. So he's been using the, his his meth money. I, I I don't know if I uh Walt keeps saying don't don't bother them. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. Yeah. To me. So I do I hope we get to see you soon. Truly. Um anytime you're in town, anytime at all, is good for us. How about this afternoon? Uh, yeah, okay. Monoalkenes, diolefins, triene. Oh, we're in the classroom again. What's the lesson of the day? The lesson of the episode. Carbon. Carbon is at the center of it all. There is no life without carbon. The man who invented the diamond. All right. H. Tracy Hall. Write this name down. I'm writing it down. Dr. Hall invented the first reproducible process for making synthetic diamonds. I mean, this is way back in the 50s. Now, today, synthetic diamonds are used in oil drilling, electronics, multi billion dollars. Diamond cutters. Now, at the time, Dr. Hall worked for General Electric, and he made them a fortune. I mean, incalculable. You want to know how GE rewarded Dr. Hall? A $10 U.S. savings bond. <laughs> Should we write it down? <laughs> So word got around. Let me see it. Dad, let me see it. Don't worry about it. Yo, Flynn's gonna beat somebody. It's just been waiting all day. What if the kid grows attached to Pinkman? Where this is going. The door is propped open. I didn't drop it. Shit, you dropped it. Shut the hell up about it. You shut up. You shut up. Shut up. Get up. Shut up. 
Shut up! Both of you! Yeah, we might have done. I have an idea. Lewis! Ben! Here's what I think. You idea them, and then together, you and I put a bag over their heads. We tie them up. Drive that bully them from the, the first episode. When they're in the clothing store, maybe. A huge mound of fire ants. The guy who acted like Biff from Back to the Future. An old With me? Scorpion. Scorpions are good. Yeah. Father son bonding. Gray matter. <laughs> uh, Walt. Look who's here. Whoa. Oh, Gretchen. Hi. Oh, it's nice to see you. Well, what, a, what a nice surprise. Yeah. Mrs. Schwartz, thank you so much for what you've done for my dad. It was a really good thing. You're very welcome. We're going to find a way to. No, no, no. You don't want to. You don't want to ever hear that. <laughs> you, you know, I, I, I hate to say it, but I, I really need to get going. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> no. Good to see you. And uh, you and Elliot are welcome anytime, really. Um, and I, for one, am going to be much better about keeping in touch. So Skylar doesn't know about them from 20 years ago. That's what I was thinking! Get some alone time. Gretchen. Hey. Hey, yourself. What did you... We need to talk. Can you not do or say anything to Please. Oh. Please. You don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Yo, all right. I want my money and my dog. Come on. I just, I just want to say. It, man. What? What? What do you want to say? I just want to go on record, man. You hit me really, really hard, man. You hit me really hard. I think I'm seeing double. You know, what I mean? maybe I need to go see a hospital or something. Shut up. Jesus. <laughs> Serious, man. I might have a concussion. Don't fall asleep, baby. Subdural hematoma. Don't fall asleep. Shut up. All right, empty your pockets. Turn them out. Everything on the table. Don't take your eyes off them. I told you, Diesel, we ain't holding anything. We shot it off. Yeah, it shot an ounce in a day and a half. Yeah. I tell you what, both of you. Pull it out of your butts right now, or I go grab a flashlight and some pliers and go exploring. There you go. All right, come on, on the table. Uh. All right, so what? You hold the crystal and she holds the H, huh? <laughs> There's maybe uh, an eight ball here. Where's the rest of my meth? Yo, for real? She up and lost it, yo. You shut up! You shut up! Hey, hey, shut up! up. Shut up! Stop. Stop it! Hey! Hey, baby! Oh! Come here, baby. Human shield. Oh. Is it just so happens we got your money, man? Plus interest. You're damn right, plus interest. Where? Backyard. Go right hand to the man, dog. It's probably like a trap back there. Hurting, painful. Hey, 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 hey. Me and your old man are just, we're just playing a game, all right? Hey, don't move. Oh, jeez. <laughs> ATM. Yo, that's my bank. So it's FIDC insured, yo. It's a victimless crime. All we did, we just walked in all smooth by. Nobody even noticed. Nobody noticed. For real. I'm telling you, victimless crime. Yeah, these guys are dangerous. You don't know what the hell you're doing, do you? 
I thought you told me you boosted like six of these. Yeah, boosted. Don't those things have like ink bombs in them? Don't listen to that skank. Oh, stop calling me that! I swear to God, I will shoot you both in the face! Don't take your eyes off him. Where's the kid? Huh? How about you feed the kid a decent meal every now and then, huh? Give him a bath, put some baby powder on it. Thank you. So how do you pay for all this? Tell me why you did it. That's not really an issue here. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> happened 20 years ago yeah. that's pretty much the size of it what happened to you really what happened because this isn't you what would you know about me Gretchen what would your presumption about me be exactly that I should go begging for your charity and you waving your checkbook around like some magic wand is going to make me forget how you and Elliot, how you and Elliot cut me out. What? I can't be how you see it. It's my hard work, my research, and you and Elliot make millions off it. That cannot be how you see it. Oh, good. That's beautifully done. You Boy, you are always the picture of it. Left me. Picture of innocence, just sweetness and light. You left me. You poured forth into my weekend you and my father and my brothers. And I go up to our room and you pack into bags, barely talking. What, 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 what did I dream? All that? That's your excuse. To build your little empire on my work? How could you say that to me? You walked away, you, you abandoned us, me. Ellie. Rich girl, just adding to your millions. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to you. I don't even know where to begin. I just see like this kid, something's gonna happen to the kid. It's gonna set Jesse off. He's either gonna do something himself or... She and I had a perfectly nice visit this afternoon and then you come home and all of a sudden she's in a big hurry to leave and then the two of you are talking in the driveway. I was with Gretchen. Well, Gretchen and Ellie. There goes your cover, Walter. She just couldn't bring herself to tell you. I mean, she couldn't tell me either, really. I mean, there was a lot of hemming and hawing and beating around the bush from both of them. Okay, what? But 
but they were truly sad, in, in my opinion. <laughs> They're broke. And the economy's in the toilet, we all know that. And all these big banks, Fannie Mae, and apparently, gray matter is no more immune than Walter Skyler's gonna keep calling Gretchen. Stop. Let me get a hit of that, Chris. Hell no, you lost your share. Come on, baby. It's all I need. This is just this little hit. Shut the hell up, you dumb skank. I'm trying to concentrate. I hate no skank. I would appreciate an apology. Trying to take the high road here. Are you gonna do right? Just listen to me, stupid. I, I am in the middle of very important work. I am on the verge here. All right, so set your skank ass pothole and assist me and shut up. Take the kid with you and run, man. Good rest of your life, kid. Kid is safe. Ah! <laughs> Look at that. Co starring young boy. Brandon Carr and Dylan Carr. They use twins and take turns. It's good. That subverted my expectations in a really good way for the kid, at least, but like. Pinkman can't do it. So we got a little peek into Gretchen and Elliot's and Walter's history. So yeah, they did at least Walter's version of the story. Walter thinks that they stole his idea and they made millions. What is Walter doing? He's got the worst lie face. It's like, huh, that, that's weird. Yeah, they must be keeping up appearances. Like, I don't know, you know, it's just a bunch of, like, business lingo, you know, you wouldn't understand. But basically, they're broke. <laughs> they're what? They're, they're friends of, like, the last 20 years. Skyler's going to call them again. <laughs> so stupid. Stop! Okay. Let me just sort this out. Walter thinks that they stole his idea and they made millions off of it. That's his version of the story. Gretchen says that, without a word, he abandoned Elliot and uh, herself and walked away without saying a word. That's her version of the story. You think they would have at least, you know, talked about this within the last, like, 20 years, right? It seems like they still keep in contact, right? So what, they just never brought it up again? And Walter's just always had this grudge? 
he could have been told something by Gretchen's brothers. I don't know. There goes my theory out the window. I like Gretchen now. <laughs> uh, yeah, Walter's he's a tragic character. Like, at this point now, I'll go through one more episode. I'll see what happens. But... Uh, yeah, I, I called... <laughs> I called Elliot naive. Just more hints, more torture for me. Uh, what's the connection? Walter has his version of the story. Gretchen has her version of the story. We're probably going to be introduced to Gretchen's family at some point. So we'll learn more then. Why didn't Walter speak up? If his idea was stolen, <laughs> I'd be pissed. My idea was stolen, I'd be pissed. I'd be screaming it at the rooftop, but like... Maybe he was told something else. Maybe he was blackmailed. How'd he get lung cancer? So many hints. I gotta draw like a map or something. You'll see like behind me, I'll have like... A giant sheet of paper and like theories and like red string just pointing from like... It's just gonna be a giant web. Every time Walter goes into the classroom and he does a lesson, it's always like the lesson of the episode. So they're talking about Carbon, the man who invented the diamond. Like he, he, he talked about how the man received, uh, basically, GE stole, used his idea to make a fortune. And the man was rewarded with a $10 saving bond, savings bond. So that runs parallel to what happened with Elliot and Gretchen stealing stealing. We don't actually know what happened. He could he, he just walked out. He could have just abandoned his research thinking, "Oh, nothing of it." And then Elliot and Gretchen just used it. I mean, they could have credited him, right? <laughs> um but yeah, that's that that's the parallel. Uh, Walter is the man who created the synthetic diamond. And Elliot and Gretchen represent GE, so that's the that's the parallel. That's the reason why he told that story. See little clues. So you know what's gonna happen later. <sighs> but these little clues like of what happened in the past is driving me nuts. So we'll see. I'm learning a lot. It's like I'm in the classroom with them. You know, it could just be a new semester. That's why Ben's not in the... Why am I so upset with... I'm so obsessed with this guy. I want to know if he passed his midterm. Well, it's the midterm, right? How much time has passed? At the birthday party, it seemed like that was the first time that they offered a job to Walter because of the cancer treatment, but they hold a little bit of a grudge, too. But they're willing to bury the hatchet, but Walter's not, so I need to know what... What's so, what did he, what was his big idea? Why did he abandon them? Walter's a tragic character. It's not, this is not gonna end well. I don't know where I stand now with Gretchen. I like her again. <laughs> uh, femme fatale, I don't know, maybe. But after that, like, ah, uh, no. I have to rework this theory. Elliot, you're still naive. <laughs> so we'll see if, Maybe he said something. We'll just have to see. Okay, one more episode. Let's go! It's like a music video in front of the RV. Juarez at the bottom. That guy's got a cool strap. It's like a film. It's like a real film. Drug cartel. Fifty-eight. I was close. <laughs> what is close? There's no close in science, Barry. There are right answers and wrong answers. Barry. Close didn't put men on the moon. I mean, I really studied, like, really, really studied, like, all night hard and <laughs> so into chemistry for. Like, Concepts. I just think I might have, you know, the attention. Ah, oh, memories. Deficit. Good times. Please just let this slide. Don't bullshit a bullshit. The answer is no. Next time apply yourself. 
yo. I would have smartened up more in chemistry if my chemistry teacher talked to me like that. Leaving this phone off for another 15 minutes, so call me. Oh, and, and by the way, that thing we talked about, when I said handle it, Wow, great. Thanks, man. A little late. I know you're home. Your car is here. Come on. Hey. It's the next one. Oh, wait, no, never mind. Can I help you? Uh, no, thank you. Well, I'm the manager, so can we stop with the pounding, please? It's just very important for me to see him. And you knocked, right? Yeah. He didn't answer. Which means it's not here. Look, I'm his father, all right? You're Mr. Jackson? Yes. <laughs> and you are? Jane. Jane. Very nice to meet you, Jane. Now, as I said, I, I, I would like to have you let me inside here so that I can check on my son's well being. Understand? Look. Whatever's going on between the two of you is family. I don't get involved in family. If Jesse doesn't want you in, you're not getting in. Period. Sorry. Oh. Yo. That's a nice shirt. <laughs> what, he's been hearing that the whole time? You okay? Yeah. Rough night. Is this what you've been doing the whole time I've been trying to reach you? No. I've been taking care of business. What business? What business? The business you put me on, asshole. What, you already forgot? I said handle it. I meant fear and intimidation. I meant get your money back. I certainly never meant for you to, to kill somebody. No. Well, too late, you know, because dude's dead. All right? Way dead. Oh, and hey, hey. Hey, here, here's your money. Yeah, 4,660 bucks. You're half. It's been in good health, you miserable son of a bitch. <sighs> the one with blood on it. Yeah, Walter went ballistic over just losing a thousand bucks. Crushed it like, oh my god, the, the sound it's still in my ears, you know, and the blood, like everywhere. Like there's so much you would not believe. Does anybody think that you killed him? Oh, I called the cops. You called the cops? Yeah. And I called and I split and then they came in and busted her. Gosh, she was, she was so zapped out of her mind. You know, it's, she did it for like nothing. Could you not stop this woman from killing this man? She had a gun on me, all right? Yeah, my gun, okay? Mine. Go ahead. Say it, say it. No, I, I ain't no, uh, I ain't no Tuco or, or Crazy Ant. I can't run a crew. Come on. Come on, point made, man. Point made, yes. <laughs> well, we're a pair, aren't we? <laughs> so, are you gonna get back up on the course? You get on. Right. I just want to forget. Hank has PTSD. Pinkman is PTSD. Yo, I want to see the dynamic between Badger and Walter. Hey, there's Hank. Hey. Hey, 
What's up with that? Jesus Malverde. Patron saint of Mexican drug dealers. But, yeah, hell, I, I know who it is, okay? <laughs> Scumbags kneeling down, praying to him. Hey, please, senor sente. Hey, no de, hey, please. This is a new job. Nobody. <laughs> you know your enemy is yourself. You'll fight without danger in many battles. Right on. Right on. <laughs> Yeah, it's like I'm, I'm down with the, the Sioux. Hey, you traitor! <laughs> Sir! Glad to have you on board. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Everybody getting you settled in? Oh, yeah, yeah. Great group of guys. Oh, here we go. Walter and Badger finally meet. I'm Heisenberg. You're Heisenberg? Yeah, I remember you. You were the cook. Let's just get this over with. Where's Jesse? Is he? Hey, that's cool. Real cool. Totally cool. Amazingly cool. It's all there, man. Every dollar. In case you want to, like, count it. Here? I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, you cool, yo. Did Jesse really, uh... I mean, uh... Did he really... Who sang? Damn, man, it's all over town. Everybody's like, whoa, snap. Usually I gotta chase dudes down for their money, but today, everybody's paying up. True that. Serious. I like her. He really did it. Neither confirming nor denying. <laughs> the thunder of the rockets. <laughs> dun dun dun. Was that the guy in the picture that she looked at a couple episodes ago? How's he doing? Oh, he's... he is doing great. Yeah, he's plugging away. <laughs> great. You still teaching? Yeah. Can you tell him I said hello? I was applying for the data entry job. You're kidding. Skyla, you were like our uh, go-to bookkeeper. Yeah, well... the economy, you know. How about, uh... get your old job back? We're expanding, and, uh, well, between you and me, the whole department's pretty much of a mess. The work could be cut out for you, but, uh, we could use your help. Okay. Look, it's an entire city full of buyers. Now, why aren't we exploiting that? Because it's not our territory. Because we lack initiative. Initiative. Yes, ah. you need to employ more dealers. Double, triple your crew. Those three I met, they should each have three, six, nine sub-dealers working for them. Exponential growth, that's the key here. It's not our territory. Just... The game has changed. The word is out. And you are a killer. What are we talking about? Apparently it's all over town. Somebody crossed you. You crush their skull with an ATM machine. That's not how it happens. Who cares? Just as long as it's our competitors who believe it and not the police. Oh my. Now, don't you see how great this is? This is the beginning of the rest of your life. It's an endless cycle. You are a blowfish. What? A blowfish. Think about it. Small in stature, not swift, not cunning. Easy prey for predators, but the blowfish has a secret weapon, doesn't he? Doesn't he? What does the blowfish do, Jesse? What does the blowfish do? 
I don't even know. The blowfish puffs up, okay? The blowfish puffs himself up four or five times larger than normal. And why? Why does he do that? So that it makes him intimidating. That's why. Now, who messes with the blowfish, Jesse? Nobody. You're damn right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Blowfish, say it like you mean it. I'm a blowfish. I'm a big brave dog. Yeah. Uh, a blowfish. <laughs> and Hank is a fish out of water. It means let's make a deal. Scratch my back, I scratch yours. Hey, but you stop jerking us off here. Where's the meat? When's it going down? White boy don't like, let's make a deal, huh? White boy's gonna kick your ass <laughs> and he's wasting his time. Hey, white boy. My name's Tortuga. You know what that means? I'd have to guess. I'd say that's uh, Spanish for asshole. Tortuga means turtle. That's me. I take my time, but I always win. Where? With who? Well, someone willing to work around that, apparently. That's been a key. Is Mr. Grabby Hand still there? Marie, that was one time at a Christmas party, and he was so drunk, he was practically slurring his words. That's what you want, Nick. And he apologized profusely. Plus, he's married with a family, so I'm sure he doesn't want to get sued for sexual harassment. It will not happen again. <laughs> it's going to happen again. You know, we can always help out. Yeah, why did they ask them to help out? <laughs> you know, Walt, he would just... Speak of the devil. Hey, hi. Speak of the devil, and he shall appear. Nothing much. How's things with you? Good. Hi. Good. Hi. Mom got a job. Job? Why? Well, do I need to get out the checkbook and show you? No. I... Do you think it's a good idea in your condition? No, no. The doctor said I can work practically up until I go into labor, and it's just an office job. I'm just sitting on my butt. With Mr. Hand Grab Man. Grab your hands. I'm back working in the accounting department. Skylar, what about the welding fumes? Isn't that why you had to quit in the first place? Um, they've gone green since then. They have some kind of green welding or something. Uh, I didn't smell anything when I was in there. Didn't Mr. Benneke pass away? Who's running things? Ted, the son. Anyway, I have got to go. Does so Walter not know about Ted? Is Walter going to have to teach Ted a lesson? Yo, you're a, a real good drawer. I used to do a little of that. Oh, yeah, in his room. You used to be a drawer, too, huh? Why Mr. White loves chemistry. <laughs> Yeah, what what stopped you? Your dad? No. Just... So, tell me something. Mm -hmm. What kind of tattoo artist has no tattoos? That's way too big a commitment. You man, you're pink. You man, everybody's been talking about you. Yeah. Not all, man. Real. Nickname. Pinkman, huh? Yeah. I thought your name was Jackson. It's just leaves. <laughs> oh well, I guess it's better than telling a lie. 
that your nickname is your real name. You attract more bears with honey than you do with vinegar. Hey, uh, something I need to know about? What? Oh, that? Nah, man. It was just, uh, singing your phrases. Glad to have you. Welcome aboard. Hank, you should get Rosetta Stone. It's gonna be a big one. What's the matter, Schrader? You act like you never saw a severed human head on a tortoise before. Get away! Hey! Welcome to. has changed, yo. This is our city, all right? All of it, yeah. the whole damn place, our territory. We gotta get more dealers, you know, foot soldiers, right? Now they'll be working for you. They're working for me, and they're working for you. you own this city. I'm not even thinking right now. I'm thinking about the explosion. <laughs> what? Corner the market and raise the price. Simple economics. Wow, Ted, it's, it's a little early for wine, isn't it? Damn. Grape juice and making the girls breakfast in the morning. Hey, how's Denise doing? Uh, we split up about a year ago. I'm so sorry. She's definitely happy now. I guess I have two most days. Together since high school. Yeah. I remember that. Anyway. I don't know, people change. Anyway, yeah. I just wanted to welcome you. Welcome you back. Mr. Grabby Hands while he's in a relationship with this high school sweetheart. Hmm. Oh, hey. <laughs> Pinkman, and that guy you met, he's, uh, he's not my dad. He's so honest. Walter, there'd be like five lies intertwined together. Don't do it here. So hey, I got 
This kick-ass new flat screen. Wanna see? Probably should have afforded furniture first before you got the TV. It's, uh, it's got that thing where the blacks are like, you know, really, really, really black. black. And, uh, the Dolby six point, whatever. So, we we'll really rock the house. But I'll, you know, I'll be way down. Of course. I don't know what the hell's taking so long. Yeah, why are you taking so long to make a move? Oh! <laughs> Silence. Just the silence in these four episodes is just deafening. That's the theme for this video, deafening silence. So much more effective than, you know, going ballistic. There's a time and a place for everything. Not every argument needs to be a screaming match, just like holding back the fury. Skylar, those eyes, just piercing. That piercing glare. It's not even a glare, it's just a wide, wide eyes like... <sighs> Walter holding back, talking to Gretchen like he wants to go ballistic. Whatever they did to him, or whatever he thinks they did to them, he thinks they did to him, okay? Like, it must have been something big. So. <laughs> Walter, stop, man. He's he's so, he's greedy. He's so greedy. He's a tragic character. It's so weird how he just he finds a goal and then he just goes for it now, but back then, or he can never be proven wrong. I mean, you think Tuco goes ballistic whenever his intelligence is in, in, in question, but Walter, he doubles down on any decision that he makes. Even if it's just like these last couple of years where he's just on autopilot, like, that's a choice. He's doubling down on that choice. He'd rather just, you know, keep that bitterness just in the back of his mind towards Gretchen and Elliot. Nobody's forcing him to stay in high school uh, chemistry position. <laughs> you can go somewhere else. You don't have to, it's not just gray matter and then high school chemistry. Like, you can do other things. Why is he not doing other things? He's just doubling down on his, it's his fault. I think, it, it, yeah, it's, it's all his fault so far. Gretchen has her side of the story where she's saying that, oh, you abandon us. And Walter's like, you stole my idea. Yeah, well, why didn't you call them out on it? And go somewhere else and do your own research and like, come on. Like, they seem like nice people. They would give you credit, man. And you could have worked with them. But no, he'd rather just stick to his guns. Walter is still so headstrong about, you know, not opening up to Skylar. And he found the perfect excuse. You know, oh, they were paying for it, and then Gretchen was, like, going along with it. All he had to do was talk to Gretchen. He could have said something. She isn't, like... She hasn't been lied to a thousand times that we know of by Walter. So, like, he could have said anything if he had just kept his composure, but he didn't because of what they did to him. He's so furious. Like, I want to know what happened. That exploded in his face. And now Skylar's working at... Mr. Grabby Hands, Grabby Emporium. You don't just drop that hint. And he's, you know, Mr. 
keeps his hands to himself for the rest of the season. He's, something's gonna happen. Skylar's not gonna say anything. She didn't say anything about the cigarettes. And then Walter's gonna find out. He's gonna go Heisenberg on Ted. Nobody's talking to each other. It's so weird. Everybody's talking to each other, but nobody's talking to each other. Marie, I don't think Marie told Skylar what her problem was. You know, they shared a moment, but... Marie's not admitting to what happened. I mean, okay, she did say she was sorry. But she hasn't explained why she does this. Hank's not talking about his PTSD. I hope Hank pulls himself together when he's faced with a desperate situation. Like when it really, when it really counts. He dodged a grenade there. I just want to see what's written on that turtle. Hola dia. Hello, D-E-A. They know. This is getting dark fast. They killed Machete! Whoa, he's only 5'6". Danny Trejo is only 5'6". I thought he was, he looks taller. Marie, don't visit Hank in El Paso. Just stay where you are. You saw him before when Gonzo was, you know, at that crime scene. He was, he was cracking jokes there, so. Yes, PTSD, it's, it's really affecting him. Like, he needs to talk to somebody. Talk to Dave. Maybe it could be a two-for-one deal. <laughs> he makes his own beer with his face on a sticker. <laughs> it's so funny. I love his character now. You know, before, I thought he was just a Chad. You know, it's just like, who are you trying to impress, man? But he's so... You know, he, he's like a tiny dog. Or like... You know, he's pumping up his chest to make himself look big, but like, everybody else is a bigger dog than he is. Now he's... He's just totally out of his element. Walter Jr.'s not talking about his problems. Now, it seems like Walter and Flynn will spend, you know, legit, you know, father-son time together. Not like this forced, oh, I'm gonna teach you how to drive. I wanna, like, teach you how to shave, you know? <laughs> Tell you about, you know, the birds and the bees. Do all this forced stuff. But now they have, like, something in common. They wanna track down this bully that's slandering Walter. But at least now they'll spend some time together. So my theory about the whole Walter Jr. finding the gun and the $70,000 cash in the vent. It's just, okay. That's, that's gone. <laughs> Good. Pinkman's not talking about his past. He's not opening up to Jen. Well, now he is. Or Jean. Jean's his, Jean's, Jean. Jen. Jan. That, Jan. Jane. That's her name. Jane, that's her name. There we go. Pinkman's the only one that's actually telling the truth. So yeah, Penguin's he's the only one opening up. Or starting to, at least. Did you guys catch that line that Pinkman said? Uh, when Jane was asking him, well, what stopped you? When they were talking about, um, oh, you're a really good drawer. So, yeah, I used to draw too. Well, what stopped you? Oh, uh, well, yeah, you know. And he just changed the subject. Yeah, what did, you, what did stop you, Jesse? I hope we just find out more about Jesse's backstory with, like, his father. I'm pretty sure it has something to do with his parents. Heisenberg. Right now they're a ghost, a whisper. A rumor. That's scarier than actually seeing people, like, you know, actually do this. Stories, you know, word of mouth. That's more effective than actually doing the act itself. So they're pumping up the reputation and as they you know expand they're gonna come across this uh this cartel like I, I just know it i just don't want to see badger with like his head on a freaking badger skinny pete his head is on a skinny oh wait no he's already skinny yeah oh, man like I, I would totally do it but i'm on probation thanks for having my back skinny pete <laughs> That beginning sequence, though, it must be like episode 13 of this season that we finally get to, you know, understand what's going on with that stuffed animal at the beginning. Some kind of explosion. 
It was in a pool. Walter's house has a pool in it. So were those two guys at the beginning who found Tuco's grills just crossing the border? I guess. I don't know how much my heart can take. Gretchen, I have to reevaluate like my theory now. We better not see Uncle Dio again. I'm gonna go off if I hear that bell. <laughs> so yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this reaction. Uh, see, I have more to my wardrobe than just blue and gray. I also have black too. Or is it a really dark blue? Who knows? Uh, if there's any episodes that flow well together, just, you know, tell me. So if, if, it, if it helps enhance our viewing experience, just, you know, drop a comment. I'll totally, like, do what you say. These 12 episodes flow better together. You may as well just do one video, right? Any hints every now and then, I greatly appreciate. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next video.